silence screamed loud and the demons crawled out. The roses turned black and the stars dimmed out. When the soul's deep went invisible, while the darkness turned invincible. When the vision blacked out and terror went about, with the clouds on fire and the devil to conspire. Truth be told, this poem is as extreme as my shady alter ego's imaginative ability could reach. By the way, this alter ego of mine tends to appear after I, not so literally, cry my eyes out. It also happens to be a lot more creative than I actually am, as the poem itself suggests. Now, the point behind bragging about this mysterious alter ego of mine is to prove something really astonishing, as well as important, about secretion of liquid containing proteins, enzymes, lipids, and other substances from the lacrimal apparatus in response to an emotional state very different from lacrimation, which is crying, actually. As unbelievable as this may sound, but crying can actually make you more creative. Some of the most creative people in the history have happened to be the most emotional. Ernest Hemingway, an American journalist and novelist, for instance, quoted, there is nothing to writing. All you do is sit down at a typewriter and bleed. No wonder he was loaded with creativity. Think of it as how your pain can inspire others. And I'm sure soon enough, you won't be able to keep track of how exactly you turned into this soul-stirring poet. So quick tip, just embrace your feelings and spill creativity along those tears. But hold on, there's a lot more to crying than just creativity. It reminds you of the fact that you aren't really a robot on autopilot. It's a reminder of how you're capable of emotions, of your ability to get hurt, of the fact that you can breathe, that you belong to this mysteriously weird species of animals, that you're human anyway. You see, the truth is, we aren't as strong as we pretend, not only with others, but even with ourselves. So this innate talent we think we're blessed with of bottling up our emotions into elegant jars of our mind is nothing less than a myth. Take it from a teenager who has a messy room and has tried bottling up with everything possible from novels to Netflix. But along the efforts of being rational, it's simply impossible to ignore a part of you and pretend how things don't matter. Think of it like this. It's like avoiding your best friend, even when you know it in your gut how badly you want to hug her to make things right, and yet you let your ego win. Now you might wonder what this analogy has anything to do with your relationship with emotions, but mind you, it does. You avoid your feelings even when you feel like letting them all out and simply embrace them, because somehow you know that's going to make things right. Yet you don't do so because you are too occupied with lying to yourself about how you're not so vulnerable. After all, the ego likes to protect its image, and vulnerability is a crack in its armor. But you also happen to be too perfect to let your vulnerable side crack that fancy armor, and in the process, allow your ego to win. Now, let's look at another aspect. How hitting pause on your emotions for too long is not so healthy. First, you need to understand something about inevitability. The fact that you're going to explode out with your emotions one way or another is inevitable. Doesn't seem serious enough? Then hear this out. Your suppressed feelings can manifest themselves in escapist behavior, which may include substance abuse, reckless driving, and dangerous sports. Studies also show that bottling up emotions for too long can lead to increased risk of developing heart diseases and certain forms of cancer. It can lead to mental and physical illness and can potentially even shorten your lifespan. But on the positive side, there's a way out. Through that lacrimal apparatus I talked about in the beginning, yeah, you're right. I'm indeed suggesting that crying can contribute towards your longevity. Now I understand that's an intriguing fact I just stated, but I always come with details to fulfill one's curiosity. To get relieved of the bottled up feelings in order to carry out a healthy and perpetual life, crying can definitely help. Out of the three tears secreted by the lacrimal ducts in your body, which are reflex tears, emotional tears, and continuous tears, your emotional tears tend to have special health benefits. Biochemist and tear expert Dr. William Prey at the Ramsey Medical Center in Minneapolis discovered that reflex tears are 98% water 
whereas emotional tears also contain stress hormones that get excreted from body while crying. After studying the composition of tears, Dr. Frey found that emotional tears tend to have special health benefits and also some toxins and hormones that are excreted from the body while crying. Now, I'll be sharing my wisdom about inevitability once again. The fact that you'll get tired of being not so vulnerable is inevitable. Someday, you'll have to let it all out. Doesn't seem serious enough? Then hear this out. Your suppressed feelings can manifest themselves in es escapist behavior, which may include substance abuse, reckless driving, and dangerous sports. Now, if the wisdom of a 16-year-old is still not sufficient, hear this out. Roman poet Ovid from 43 BCE has already written that it is some relief to weep. Grief is satisfied and carried off by tears. So this automatically proves that the healing effects of crying are rather old, dating back to the classical antiquity, even if there is limited literature on the functions of crying. Also, a review of popular American and British magazines from 1848 until 1985 revealed that people undoubtedly believed that crying is good for their mental and physical health. Finally, I'll be presenting my one last story about inevitability. The fact that you're going to get tired of being not so vulnerable is inevitable. Someday you'll have to let it all out, even if it would be the hard way. So why not just do it anyway? Why not embrace our feelings as our own? Because ultimately, they are our own. Why not make it OK to cry, even if we feel judged, even when the society tells us to man up, even if it means letting go of the egoistic armor, even if it means letting go of untrue, outmoded conceptions. Because there's always a way out, you know, to that lacrimal apparatus I talked about in the beginning. So few more words from the young lady. Be a crybaby instead. Thank you.